Sherlock, how do you want Sherlock to be? It's just, this so feels like a trick question. Okay, okay, it's it's question. I know, I know, but what I thought can I say? No, 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 I know, but I mean, I think, you know, what can I say? What can I say? Um, I've become a very guarded interviewer, ladies and gentlemen. Um, but I genuinely, I genuinely can't say anything about it. And the reason is, I genuinely can't say anything. <laughs> I come from a place of information, and I think that's the best place for me to remain. I mean, do you know what the scripts are? Mm -hmm. I know you can't say, and I can't say, and we can't say. <laughs> I tried, I tried really hard. Okay, <laughs> much more importantly, is there any hope for Molly? Oh. <laughs> Well, okay. All right. Thank you. Um, 
but anyway, my, my sort of, yeah, anyway, um, it's weird. Um, but I've got, yeah. It's so, a fascinating moment in time, isn't it, that, that sort of, you know, Chris Teagan's in parade then, and he's yeah. really a man of, of the sort of, the we, change we, in the century. That was the idea that, was the idea that I would be shocked about this and I'd take over, can I do that? I think you should. Okay, I'll take it. No, but no, just, just, um, give him a drink. Um, I think the, the other world, or at least sort of other age era thing is to do with something I, I had been sort of rooted out for at the very beginning of my career and, and, and remain to be. And um, I'm happy to do that. I'm happy to contain old souls from old worlds. And it's, it's, it, they're wonderfully rich, dynamic characters. So I think that was part of their attraction to having me play Sherlock in the first place. Um, in fact, Stephen says it was the, what I did in the time company, uh, which is slightly disturbing. But um, I, uh, I, 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 I guess it. I sort of guess it, and I, that's that was part of what I tried to prep. The part of what I tried to, you know, I, I do have more taste and sensibilities, but you can kind of suppress those a little bit with Sherlock. Other than the fact that he is in the 21st century, he's a masterful user of multimedia and can blog or tweet or. or any kind of interface as fast as, as, as the fastest. But, but the original Sherlock was a modern, modern was man. Modern time, time, he was, he was. So it sort of strayed into the territory of how to hold yourself, the voice, what, what, what kind of class to give him, what sort of shaping can I give him in my mind as a backstory, what his parenting, schooling, um, where did it all begin? Did it begin? Was he born like this? And I don't think he was. I think he, I think he began. I think that's what we touched on in two and hopefully might explore more of in three. And I think it's just. I said that I've, like, I've dropped a massive bomb, but I don't think I have. There are going to be flashbacks, as far as I know. I really haven't read anything, so if I am saying that there are flashbacks, I didn't know. I'm just guessing. <laughs> um, but I've read this one, so it's not my style. But I, I mean, as far as just being oldly worldly, um, I, my English teacher said when I was very young that I was an old soul. I, I went from, in fact, James and James, two people here somewhere who have known me since I was 13 when I was still playing women. Um, with them playing men, uh, not in that way, but um, uh, <laughs> nothing much. Brilliant. Uh, <laughs> sorry, James, James. But I, uh, I was playing the time in my first year at, at school at Harrow, and um, and then Rosalind, and as you like it, who's the ultimate sort of brain fucker. So, oh, I But it's after nine o'clock. Sorry, I'm sorry. To oh. <laughs> <laughs> I would have told you my Tourette's joke if I hadn't told you that. Well, young people here, so I'm sorry about what I just said. I am sorry. This is better than swearing, not shut up. It's very bad example. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> so it's interesting, I guess, nail into a shelf. I, yes, then went from playing old, uh, young women to playing old men. I was playing uh, really young men by the time I was 17, and James Keane played my son. So, there we go. It's a weird one. Um, and I think. And Arthur Crocker Harris as well, which was my first rascal housing in school um, in the Browning version, which is wonderful. One of the things to do to try and upset teachers. <laughs> did you have, yeah, did, did yeah. you have a, like, was there a, I know your parents were actors, but was there a moment for you? Was there a catalyst or anything? Or was it always just what you were going to be? Oh, no, 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 no. I mean, you know, they, another one of these things that's been inflated in the press. I am so insanely grateful for the privilege of not only having incredibly loving parents. But two acting parents who worked really very, very hard because they weren't necessarily the commercial zenith of their, yeah. of their time when I was growing up in order for them to be able to afford this absurdly expensive education. And I was treated broadly by that school and remained to be um, an engineer. I say, hello to you on that school bit. Where you guys are? There you are. Oh, yeah. My headmaster, my mistress are here tonight. <laughs> explain in the past, but it's come across as me, I don't know, disowning my past. And then, uh, perversely, this summer, I'm suddenly, you know, the poster boy for anti-posh bashing. I mean, I was away when it sort of started. I thought, well, who's taking a panel back to, to Paul Victoria Beckham? What's going on here? Um, and then I realised, my God, they've actually twisted something I didn't even say into some kind of, I'm some sort of 
voice piece for, for privilege or toyism or poshness or some. One of the main reasons you get involved in acting is to be free of all of that, is to try and experiment with being something other than yourself and your circumstances, however grateful you are for those, and truly I am. And so it just remains a complete enigma to me why, how and why that all came about. Although it was the silly season, although I know there's the tall poppy syndrome and all that nonsense, which is one of the very few crises of the privileged position I'm now in as an actor who gets wonderful work and, and really enjoys doing it and has you know, a fantastic following. Um, mm. But it was odd, and it was one of the many adjustments I've had to sort of make. I've really gone off topic. We were talking about me being not, something. Not. I can't remember. Uh, I was going to. <laughs> From another era? I don't yes, know. old. But old, and now we've dealt with posh. We don't need to. We, don't, we, can, we can cross posh no, up this, I think. I'm neither for or against posh bashing. I think posh people are eloquent and well educated enough to stand up for themselves. I think that there's an awful lot that we need to stand up for that's not to do with being posh, that's to do with social inadequacy and, and the massive, massive gaps and disparities in our society. And I think we need to work out what that is. Um, I think I think I think I think taking sides the little any of the very complex arguments that should be going on about class and about background and about giving people a second chance. And, and on that note, this isn't just a quick plug, but I am tonight, if it's all right with you, you can make a donation, however big or large you have in your pockets, so I'm speaking to somebody, but I'm, I'm doing a cycle race in about a week's time, on 14th of October, for the Prince of Wales Trust, which again, is where I stand in all of this. This is a, a trust set up by the Prince of Wales, one of the most privileged gentlemen in the country, if not the most privileged, on the year of my birth, to help give the youth of today, disenfranchised youth, whether it's trouble at home or at school, a second chance, a voice and a standing and an ability to be taken account of and, and have, have a life, have a, have a say in their generation in you know, an era where there's a, mass, a massive amount of unemployed youth and it's the good of self-belief and I really care passionately about it, which is why I'm cycling 45 miles um, from Buckingham Palace to... Yeah. Oh, often you're going to get to see me wearing a I'll tell you that. Um, oh, no. Like, I've already, I know what my revenge is going to be for the thong moment. I will wear the thong on the outside. Brilliant. Relax, thong. It is a bit like that, it's a bit weird. But anyway. Um, How can they do that? Is that after? Well, yeah, so there'll be a bucket on the table, so when I'm signing. Terrific. But if you, if you don't get to the bucket because there's only now and there's quite a lot of you and I'm not that quick, but I try and be, please, please find someone you can give to and I'm sure they'll be able to empty some bucket of sand and hope there isn't a fire and put money in it's there. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, Let's okay. talk about fame. You alluded to some of the sort of less salubrious, uh, oh, that was, anyway, less It's a strange one. It's a very odd one, of course it is, because 